Alrighty, here's part three of chapter one. So the captain doesn't want anything to do with sailors. Okay, he's avoiding other sailors. When a seaman uh, or a sailor <laughs> did put up at the Admiral Benbow, as now and then some did, making by the coast road for Bristol, he would look in at him through the curtained door before he entered the parlor. Parlor is basically a living room. And he was always sure to be silent as a mouse when any such was present. For me, at least, there was no secret about the matter, for I was, in a way, a sharer of his alarms, meaning of his fears. He had taken me aside one day and promised me a silver fourpenny on the first of every month if I would only keep my weather eye open for a seafaring man with one leg and let him know the moment he appeared. Often enough, when the first of the month came round and I applied to him for my wage, he would only blow through his nose at me and stare me down. But before the week was out, he was sure to think better of it. Bring me my fourpenny piece and repeat his orders to look out for the seafaring man with one leg. Okay, so this guy is not only avoiding other sailors, he is paying Jim, a child, every month to basically spy for him for any guy with one leg. Okay. How that personage haunted my dreams, I need scarcely tell you, on stormy nights when the wind shook the four corners of the house. Because, mind you guys, they run the hotel, the inn, but that's also their home. Okay. So this is Jim's actual house with his family. So this guy is living in their house. That would be like your parents opening up your house um, for random people as they travel through town, kind of like an Airbnb. Okay, so that's basically what this is. And the surf roared along the cove and up the hills and cliffs. I would see him, the seafaring man with one leg, in a thousand forms and a thousand diabolical expressions. So Jim was basically this random guy, okay, who's a very scary looking dude, pulls Jim aside and says, I'll give you a penny. I'll give you money every month if you just look out for this guy. He's terrible. He's a horrible guy, okay? You have to let me know the minute he shows up. And Jim, being a child obviously kind of panics about this and he starts his imagination kind of runs away with him kind of like when you're in the basement and you hear a funny noise and then you're like oh what's that and you start imagining all these ridiculous things that it can possibly be even though it's not it's kind of like that now the leg would be cut off at the knee now at the hip now he was a monstrous kind of creature who never had but the one leg and that was in the middle of his body to see him leap and run and pursue me over hedge and ditch was the worst of my nightmares and altogether, I paid pretty dear for my monthly four-penny piece in the shape of these abominable, terrible fancies, meaning daydreams. But though I was so terrified by the idea of the seafaring man with one leg, I was far less afraid of the captain himself than anybody else who knew him. There were nights when he took a deal more rum and water than his head would carry, and he would then sometimes sit and sing his wicked old wild sea songs, minding nobody but sometimes he would call for glasses round and force all the trembling company to listen to his stories or bear a chorus to his singing. Often I have heard the house shaking with yo-ho-ho -ho and a bottle of rum, all the neighbors joining in for dear life with the fear of death upon them and each singing louder than the other to avoid remark. So this guy gets way too drunk. And Jim says that he was less afraid of this man than everybody else, which shows that's indirect characterization because it shows Jim is brave without outright saying, hey, Jim is brave. It shows he's brave through his actions. All right. Now, Jim is also telling this story himself. So he might be making himself look a little bit better too, but we also know that he is brave. Okay. So when the captain gets super drunk, um, he forces everybody in the inn to start singing. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, why, why are you this way, Captain? Why are you crazy? He's literally crazy, guys. He's like, you're gonna sing with me! And everyone's like, okay, okay, we will. Okay, we will sing. For in these fits, he was the most overriding companion ever known. He would slap his hand on the table for silence all around. He would fly up in a passion of anger at a question or sometimes because none was put. And so he judged the company was not following his story, nor would he allow anyone to leave the inn till he had drunk himself sleepy and reeled off to bed. Okay, so this guy is not the best at all.